expect the recorder. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our March Arizona Indian Education Association general meeting. Um, I'd like to say welcome. And Nawa Hatso Koigu Amtoya, Koigu Masape, Chawi Amda, Kimberly Dinkal Begay Akhan. Um, again, my, good morning. My name is Kimberly Dankal Begay. I am of the Kiowa, Caddo, and Pawnee Nations of Oklahoma. And that is actually where I currently am right now. I am on spring break. <laughs> so um, I just want to acknowledge my traditional homelands of the Caddo, Wichita, and Delaware peoples on which I currently am here in Southwest Oklahoma. I also want to acknowledge the excuse me, the Akamel Otham and the Peeposh people and um, up on where the AIEA -E 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 headquarters currently resides in Phoenix area. We would like to acknowledge um, these uh, indigenous peoples who are welcoming us upon their traditional homelands. Um, we are starting the meeting at 11.06. And again, uh, just welcome for our March meeting. And I would like for us to introduce ourselves, take some, take a few minutes to introduce ourselves. I'd like for our executive officers to begin. And then Jerry, after our executive officers, if you could just go down to participants list and um, we'll allow everybody to introduce themselves. So first off, we'll start with our vice president, Esther. Hello, yeah, Good afternoon. Is it happening? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Esther Nystrom, and I'm the Vice President for the Arizona Indian Education Association and also the Program Specialist for Mesa Public Schools Native American Education Program. Thank you for being with us today. It's lovely to see all of your faces. and. Uh, I hope we have this wonderful meeting and get some good insight into what's going on throughout the Indian nation and Indian education community. Thank you, everybody. Travis. Good morning, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well and are safe. Uh, my name is Travis Lane. I'm the Assistant Director for the Intertribal Council of Arizona, and I serve as Treasurer for AIAA. I'm glad that you ha have come to join us this morning. We're not on, we're on daylight savings, savings time or Navajo time. <laughs> um, I will go next. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jerry Thomas. I'm the AIEA Secretary and I am also the Healthy Native Youth Specialist um, for the Healthy Native Youth Program at the Intertribal Council of Arizona in Phoenix. Hello, Yat E. She is Lena Yadian. She is the Lena National Dome at Desh Kijni Bashashin. Tuat Nezahni Desh Chaydol Ki Ani Deshanala. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Lena Yazi. I am the uh, District Native American Specialist for Phoenix Union High School District. And I am also the chair for the Indian Education Advisory Council for Superintendent Hoffman. I also serve as the um, communication secretary for AIEA. So again, welcome and thank you all for taking the time to join us today. All right, so starting off, uh, we have Paul on the line. Can you introduce yourself? Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you again. Uh, spring has sprung or is springing, huh? It's almost time for the first of flowers and everything else. So looking forward to that. Uh, Paul Fulgenetti with the dropout program from Career Success Schools. We're statewide and we serve on the rural and reservation areas as well as in the metros to help kids uh, have a safety net to get back into school. And uh, it's great to see everyone. Looking forward to hearing the news. Thank you, Paul. Next, we have Monique Sosi. Uh, good morning, Yat Ethene, Vita Tony Nishlo, that had a Jenny Bashashin, Shina Jenny Dashache, Dot, what to me Dashanella. Good morning, everyone. My name is Monique Sosi. I'm a program analyst with the Intertribal Council of Arizona with the American Indian Research Center for Health. Good to see everybody. 
Thank you, Monique. Next, we have John Bastian. Jerry, he had mentioned in the chat that his microphone was not working, but he um, said good morning. Oh, okay. Thank you, John. Next, we have uh, Sami. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. My name is Sami Waitiwa. I am the policy specialist tribal liaison with Arizona Department of Education. I work um, with the policy and government relations program, as well as the Office of Indian Education. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Sami, for being here. Next, we have Beth Lewis. Hi, everyone. This is Beth Lewis with Saber Schools Arizona. I'm a proud new member of the AIEA and just here to listen and learn. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Beth. Next, we have Ben Richmond. Hi, everyone. I'm Ben Richmond. I'm the Assistant Director of the Community Engagement Corps at the Southwest Environmental Health Sciences Center, which is at the University of Arizona. Uh, and my connection's a little spotty, so I'll probably have my camera off for most of the time. Okay, no worries. Next, we have Leanne Bickhorse. Dagodeshi, Dr. Leanne Bickhorse gonze. She may say Arizona, you go nshli. She tweeted she nshli. Hello, everyone. My name is Leanne Bickhorse. And I'm the Youth Resiliency and Tribal Practices Programs Manager for Native Health. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Next up, we have Kate Tice. Hi, everyone. I'm Kate Tice. I am the Digital Director for Save Our Schools Arizona, um, but I'm happy to be here. I've been an educator for 20 years, so happy to be at your meeting today. Thanks. Thank you. Next, we have Alex Benavides. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Alex Benavides. I work with Ben Richmond at the Southwest Environmental Health Sciences Center at the University of Arizona. Um, more specifically, I work um, on the A Student's Journey program, which uh, helps build pathways to universities um, for Don Autumn Community College students. I'm um, just happy to be here today. Thank you, Alex. And then next we have Lynette Stant. Good morning, everybody. I am Lynette Stant. I am 2020 Arizona Teacher of the Year. I currently teach third grade on the Salt River Indian Reservation. And I wanna thank Lynn Ann for inviting me to this meeting. And just like others, I am here to listen and learn. Great, thank you for being here. Okay, seeing no one else new, uh, that should be it. All right, sounds good. Um, if Again, if you have not been able to see the February minutes in the chat box, just make a comment in the chat box and Jerry will resubmit those minutes. Um, if I'd like for us to all take a few mi uh, minutes to review the February meeting minutes and then we'll call for a vote. So I'll give you about two to three minutes to look those over. Can we ask for changes as we're reviewing them? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Um, Jerry, where you have um, e the letters easy, it's um, capital E A S I E.
Thank you. Okay, I know that we're making you speed read, but in lieu of the time and to be cognizant of everybody's time, if I could call for a vote to approve the minutes. Um, <clears throat> Kim, can we, um, I'll move to approve the minutes with the note of change. Yes. Is that a motion, Travis? Uh, a motion. I motioned. I said I move, but I motioned. Yeah. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Okay, motion on the floor. Is there a second? Ms. Esther, I second the motion. Okay, second on the floor. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, abstain. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, for providing those minutes. All right, next on the agenda, we have the president's report. Um, this report will be fairly short, uh, but I did want to uh, let everybody know if, you, if you're interested, the program coordinator um, position is open currently, uh, accepting applications with the Office of Indian Education. Those of you on the call, if, um, if I misguide or misdirect everybody, please feel free to jump in and correct me. Um, but the Office of Indian Education with the State Department has an opening for the program director. This application has been extended. They are accepting your applications until Sunday. So if you're interested, um, there's a website you can go to, and I will drop those in the chat box for both the those who are currently at the Office of ADE and those who are not at the office of ADE. And um, those are the two web links you can go to if you're interested in applying for this position as a program coordinator. Um, it will be under the Office of Indian Education with the State Department of Education. Um, Serena Denetsosi, um, who is graciously on the call with us today. Welcome, Serena. Um, if you want to elaborate a little bit more on that position, feel free to later um, in the meeting. Again, this is open until Sunday. Um, the application web link is there that you can go to and apply for. Um, secondly, I wanted to mention that Title VI Part 1, this is for those of us who received Title VI funding. Um, it did close last week on March 11th, so hopefully everybody got their information in and all your student counts. Uh, I know it's a, just to get that number, it's a big task, uh, so uh, kudos to all of you Indian educators who do I get those numbers together for all of our students. Um, this is funding directly from the federal government uh, to provide unique to provide for the unique services of our Native American students um, throughout the Indian country. Um, again, that closed last week. Part two will be available on April 5th. 
So please mark your calendars. The deadline for part two will be May 14th. Uh, part two is a little bit more extensive, so I highly encourage you to start gathering your information right now. That way, when you actually go to the link and the, um, excuse me, the portal, then you'll be able to just enter in your information. Again, uh, it'll open on April 5th and it'll close on May 14th. Um, as far as our Arizona legislative update, I did want to mention again, I mentioned it at our last meeting, that the House Bill 2705, which is a um, bill specifically for um, traditional tribal regalia and objects of, significant, of cultural significance, graduation ceremonies uh, for our students is going through legislation right now. Um, this bill was introduced by representative, by former representative Teller, and it is carried on now through um, currently through representative Sosi. Um, again, just as a recap, it was introduced on January 27th. It passed the House on February 11th and was assigned to the Senate um, Education and Rules Committee. That has since passed and it currently sits in the Senate. So I encourage you um, to keep apprised of this spe specific bill. It looks like it will pass. Um, right now it's in the Senate Majority Caucus, um, do pass on March 9th of 2021. That was the last action that I received the update on. So again, this is in regards to our students wearing tribal regalia, regalia during their graduation ceremonies. This also includes those who wear eagle plumes or eagle feathers. Uh, they will be allowed to wear those if everything goes well, that this goes past completely and gets signed into law. Once it is signed into law, then it goes into effect immediately. So um, a lot of work has been done on this. Uh, hopefully, we're very hopeful that things will go um, according to where it will be passed and signed into law. So keep the prayers coming. It's working. Um, on a national level, very quickly, um, yay for Deb Holland, <laughs> who's representing all of Indigenous country. Um, so exciting because now there is actually somebody who looks like us and at a cabinet level. That is an amazing victory for all of Indian country. So um, the prayers are working. So again, just keep those going because I know she's going to face a lot of opposition and um, a lot of challenges in that position, especially in regard to the environment and um, the just the, the clean energy whole um, issue. So, you know, I, I just want to acknowledge that she was sworn in this week, uh, beautifully dressed in a ribbon skirt, um, which is one of the cultural workshops we'll soon be doing um, on learning how to make that. So uh, just again, want to acknowledge that she was sworn in uh, this, this week. Uh, for student opportunities, again, I just want to make mention and if Alex or Ben want to uh, talk a little bit more about this, if you're aware of this particular youth conference, Marty Lindsay did share this with us at our last uh, meeting through a flyer that the youth conference, tri Tribal Voices Youth Conference, which is Save the Environment Now to Have a Better Life in the Future, is sponsored by the University of Arizona College of Pharmacy. That will take place April 22nd. I did not receive any further information on that. So uh, Ben, if you wanna um, share a little bit more and elaborate a little bit more about that later in this meeting, feel free to do so. Um, again, I will put the web link on the chat so that way you can uh, look at that and feel free to ask questions during that time. Um, we also received a flyer last week. This is, or I'm sorry, last month. Uh, this was sent to us by Jerry Lopez. He's out of um, CALS with the University of Arizona. It's a STEM, 4-H STEM University online underwater robotics camp for this spring. It is currently happening. It started March 3rd. It will continue through April 28th. Um, I currently don't have that link for that, but if you're interested, we will share that out um, throughout uh, the meeting here. It's for students in sixth or 12th grade. Um, it's also for Arizona teachers, educators, and 4-H volunteers to learn about underwater robotics alongside your students or club members um, during the camp. So we'll send more information about that. I do have that flyer that I can put in the chat box um, later in this meeting. And lastly, I just wanted to highlight that College Horizons is finally open. 
Um, the application opened up just a few days ago. College Horizons is an annual pre-college workshop for American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian school, high school sophomores and juniors. Um, I will drop the web link in the chat box so that you can find out more information there about that. Um, these are for, again, this is for high school students who are looking for more information about the college process. Um, if you're a, a high school sophomore or junior thinking about the future, we, they encourage you to apply to their, it's a remote program that will take place this summer. Uh, tentative dates they put out is for July 9th through the 16th. Excuse me, again, that's July 9th through the 16th. This will be a remote um, event. They uh, provide college, um, a crash course in preparing for the college application process. Um, students will learn about a variety of colleges and universities from their 50 plus partner institutions and establish personal relationships with college admission representatives as well as college counselors. So again, the deadline to apply for that is April 9th. So again, those dates are July 9th through the 16th and the deadline is April 9th. Just to reiterate, scholarships are out there. Um, lots of opportunities for a lot of our students. So I encourage you as educators to please share those scholarships. Any type of scholarship that comes along, please pass it along to your students. Um, it definitely will help them. And we are um, going to be talking about our educational webinar series in the agenda, later in the agenda and we'll provide more information for our um, AIEA youth. And so it just encourage your students to apply. And so that is basically all that I have for today for the president's report. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Are there any questions? Kimberly, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to um, make note of the, the ADE's position, the program coordinator position that initially the deadline was today, but it did get extended through Sunday. Yes. Um, um, just a quick question about um, OIE. Do you guys provide any advice or ask about advisement about any Indian education bills that are going through um, the legislature? We don't provide advice. This is Sami. I'm the policy specialist tribal liaison. Very new. I'm very new to ADE, so I think this role is developing as we move along. Um, however, we don't provide advice. Um, we do have regular updates that we've started in February. So it started out as a tribal leaders in education convening, and then we've moved to it being more of a policy program updates, and it's monthly for indigenous stakeholders. Um, if you'll put your, if you're interested in being on that listserv, just put your email um, and name uh, in the chat, and I can add you to that listserv for the April 19th meeting. Um, we should also have some of that information on the OIE blog where we do have a flyer that maps out um, the dates of the meetings, which are the third, third Monday of the month from 10 to 1130 Mountain Standard Time um, every month. Did you, Travis, did you have a specific area that you're speaking to in terms of um, looking for feedback or input on the bills? Well, I was just, well, I guess my question was if any of the legislators um, contacts your office about um, some background information around um, traditional regalia during graduations. Okay, so we do have a policy and government relations team and there's a ton of work that goes into that I am learning. However, um, we reach out to legislators, Native American, Indigenous, um, as well as those that are uh, bill sponsors. Um, we also have weekly stakeholder group meetings that um, those were already identified before I came on. However, if you come to the monthly meetings, we are looking for more engagement in terms of the tribal lens or Indigenous lens to see what your thoughts are, what your concerns are. Um, but during that time, we also have a policy or legislative update that runs through a few of the bills that are moving or making progress. And um, at the end of the year, I'm, I know that I spoke with my supervisor this morning, Kelly Kozlak, and there is the end of year report that goes out every year. So 
if you wanted to follow up on last year's, which is super minimal. So the year before is the report that's up. Um, you can get a gist of what it looks like and maybe provide some feedback on what you'd like to see um, maybe differentiated for the coming years. That's really helpful. I did not know that. Um, all the years I work with OIE, I did not know that. Um, so I guess I'd like to be involved in that. Thank you. Okay, we'll keep, we'll keep in touch with you, Travis. Thank you for asking. Awesome. Thank you, Sami, for um, sharing and updating us on that. Again, if you're interested in receiving their emails, just drop your email in the chat box and Sami will grab those for you. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. If not, we'll move on. Next on the agenda is our treasurer's report. So I am going to turn it over to Travis. Thanks, Kim. Um, thank you for those updates. Those are, those are always really helpful to know what's going on in the um, education, Indian education world. Um, <clears throat> so while, uh, while, while we celebrate the confirmation of Secretary Holland, um, I did look up the voting, re the voting results of that. And I wanted to see who are, the, who are those that opposed her um, confirmation. And it's really interesting. Um, there is senators from where Indian country is that oppose um, Secretary Holland. And those states were Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, Oklahoma, and South Dakota. And so it's a little frustrating to see that we have um, senators um, representing Indian country who are not who were not supportive of the confirmation of, um, <clears throat> of of Secretary Holland. So I am going to make that a note when I talk to NCAI because we need to change up our elected officials through voting. <clears throat> and if you have family in those states, please encourage them to be engaged with those senators to encourage. Uh, Indian friendly policies are passed. Anyways, that's off my soapbox. Um, so I'm working from home today and I, I still have not got the password from my work computer for the Desert Financial and put it on my laptop at home. So I cannot, I cannot report the, the balance of our um, Desert Financial. Um, it hasn't changed from last year or last month. Um, there might be a dividend increase, a small one, she was like a dollar and some change uh, in the savings. Um, but other than that, um, it should pretty much remain the same as far as last month's report. For the ITCA account, there were only um, expenses in printing at eight cents or nine cents, excuse me for the entire month of February, um, which leaves us a total of $46,627.03. Uh, revenue, we received um, $750 for revenue. And I believe those are the donations from um, John Bastian and his brother. And I think there was another person that also donated um, some money uh, back in back in February, and I, I forget the person who that person was. Maybe I mentioned it at the last meeting. But thank you, John, for your, um, your you and your brother's donation, and I owe you receipts. I, it is on my to-do list, and Kim, if you can remind me to send me that, re that receipt um, template. Um, with, with the Desert Financial, we are expecting some expenses to go out, um, hopefully this month. Uh, we had a, a winter camp back in December and we wanted to pay a stipend to the, the college mentors. I just haven't received the, con the names and ad uh, mailing addresses of those who were the college mentors. I could just write a check out to. Um, so Jerry, if you can please um, follow up on that, that'd be helpful. Then I can probably <clears throat> report on a more accurate budget or balance the next for next month. Um, that pretty much um, concludes my report. Does anyone have any questions?
All right. Thank you, Travis. Pre always appreciate your input. And yes, Oklahoma senators and or our Congress did vote against that. And um, a lot of that has to do with the oil and the pipelines. Um, we're not very happy or satisfied, but yes, we definitely need to get Indian country out there and voting on uh, allies and those of who will at least you know, give us a chance to for our agenda to be heard. And so hopefully um, that will change, but um, it's been an uphill battle my whole life living in Oklahoma. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're, we're continuing to move forward, but thank you for that input on the swearing in, um, or not the swearing in, the confirmation hearings uh, for Deb Pollen. And uh, encourage all of you, you know, to become involved and to know who your leaders are within your state and, you know, make that communication, connect with them and keep that communication going um, in favor for our, you know, for Indian country, for our native communities. Um, there's so much out there that we always, you know, it's, it is an uphill battle for us in general throughout the whole nation. And so I highly encourage you to become involved at any level um, to, to get the, to allow our voice to be heard during that time. So um, thank you for that report, Travis. All right, if there are no questions, we'll move on. Next on the agenda is our old business. And in old business, we have our educators banquet and celebration award, awards banquet, sorry, <laughs> celebration. Educators banquet slash award celebration. There we go. <laughs> so at this time, I am going to turn it over to Jerry. Okay, so for the educators banquet, um, basically uh, we've set up our nomination form already. Um, we did release it back in, I think um, around the winter um, slash, um, I think it was the winter slash sort of the end of autumn. But the when we originally did our deadline, it was in January. And unfortunately we only had two nominations. So we decided to have a new nomination deadline to submit the nomination forms. So those that um, haven't already heard, uh, this educator's award celebration is to um, honor and celebrate our American Indian um, educators so they can be inside the classroom, outside the classroom. We had various awards. Uh, we increased the award from 10 awards to one to 11 awards this year. Um, the last one was the resiliency award that we added. And our new deadline now is August 6th because we want our new goal date is to be the, uh, the event date is September 18th, sort of mirroring our uh, last 2019 educators banquet date, which was around September 12th um, during 2019. So this year we decided to go with an August date so we could have a pretty good amount of time to review and notify the awardees that, you know, um, get awarded by the categories and we will be uploading the uh, nomination form with the updated information for the deadlines. So right now we're tentatively still planning for a virtual event uh, because of COVID. And uh, the really big thing for our committee right now is to just um, um, get and maintain our committee members. Um, we want to be able uh, recently, we um, back in February, we finalized our sponsorship letters. We want to be able to send that letter out to potential sponsors. So we already have our list together of some sponsors that we are eyeing. And also we want to continue our monthly meetings. So uh, we're hoping to see if we can schedule a meeting for next week. If not, we'll probably do um, the beginning of April. So those are the 21 um, 21 uh, award categories. Um, those are the 11. Um, right now, uh, we still only have uh, two nomination forms, but I mean, uh, two nominations altogether. Um, this year, we decided to identify that it's not uh, restricted uh, towards higher or um, towards higher ed. So we're accepting those that are from higher ed um, not just uh, K through 12. So um, it's, you know, a very open 
um, award celebration. So we're happy to continue organizing this to continue to honor and celebrate our Arizona um, students and our Arizona teachers. And uh, we're still going to um, plan this like it was our 2019 award. So it's just going to be a virtual format. We're still going to have our silent auction. We're still going to have our award ceremony. And then we're going to still have our prayer and um, sort of um, we're, what we're also going to do is have a raffle. So we're going to organize that. So we're still planning um, along with our scholarship committee and our summer camp committee to garner up um, attention and also artwork donations. So we really want to have spo uh, sponsorships um, for this year's uh, virtual event. Um, last year, uh, we had, you know, U of A and ASU um, have really good sponsorship along with ITCA. And um, right now we're still reaching out towards sponsors. So uh, we really hope that we can get that number again. But um, does anyone have any questions so far about the award celebration? Okay, so um, if anyone has uh, a request or if they have any questions about the event or if they would like to volunteer and join the committee meetings, uh, my contact information is right there below. And, uh, you know, we're just uh, really excited for this event. That's it. All right, thank you, Jerry. Um, I just uh, would like to make one comment that, um, and Lynn Ann, please correct me if I'm wrong on this again, uh, but we do have our, our keynote speaker on the call with us today, um, Lynn Ann Stant, who is, as she mentioned, a 2020 Indian Educator um, Teacher of the Year last year. Um, she has agreed to be our keynote speaker for our virtual event. So um, Lynn Ann, uh, thank you for reaching out to her and Lynette. Thank you graciously for accepting our invitation to be our keynote speaker. We're very excited to have you and looking forward to you sharing encouraging words to our educators and attendees at the upcoming educator celebration. So thank you so much uh, for help assisting us in making this a success. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, and thank you for being on the call. Very exciting. <laughs> we have wonderful and amazing people who are on who join us at all of our meetings and it's really exciting to see the diverse uh, across Indian education all together so uh, thank you all for for again being here and taking time to be with us this morning so all right again there I put the link for the um, educators award celebration it is under our website um, under ITCA uh, under programs, Arizona Indian Education Association. There is a link on there. The nomination form is uploaded to that. There's more information, detailed information about what each of these 11 awards represent. Feel free to browse that site to find out more information. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to contact Jerry. So if there are no questions or comments, we will move, move on to the agenda to our next item which is our new business and our webinar series. Again, I am going to um, turn it over to Jerry for an update. So for our webinar series, we originally started the uh, very first webinar series, which was the educational. Um, we started that back last April uh, during 2020, during the transition of our AIEA general meetings into a virtual format on Zoom, we wanted to sort of um, get our webinar series up and running because we sort of had um, a lot of information and a lot of uh, student questions coming into AIEA. Um, they wanted more information about not only AIEA activities, but they wanted more information about um, our scholarship. They wanted to know more about the scholar, just in general, the scholarship application process and also sort of uh, college information. So during April all the way through, I think, June, 
we had um, webinars. Well, actually our last webinar was back in November. So we had a lot of information for um, beginning college students and also high school students um, regarding um, scholarship information and college information. So we had past webinars, including um, tribal colleges and universities. Um, we featured um, Lewis and um, we, we featured um, a lot of uh, tribal colleges. We featured ASU, U of A and ASU. And then we also so featured um, scholarship programs here in the state of Arizona, um, Navajo Nation. We featured um, Tana Otham. And um, there were other topics that we covered. Um, last November, we actually covered uh, FAFSA. So we did a walkthrough with the FAFSA uh, coordinator um, at South Mountain Community College. Um, she was really great. And um, she was able to spend um, time with us to answer our questions and then do a thorough walkthrough of um, the FAFSA site. So it was really great to have her help with that. So our upcoming uh, educational webinar series, what we wanna focus on is the AIEA scholarship application, but this can also transition into just a uh, scholarship application in general for our students. So what we wanna do is seek presenters for the following topics. Uh, we wanna do a writing a personal statement um, webinar, a writing a resume a CV slash cover letter webinar and then cover volunteer and cultural opportunities for native students here in Arizona. And then also um, uh, lastly, we wanna do an AIEA scholarship application walkthrough webinar uh, to wrap everything up. And obviously these topics can uh, transfer to um, a bunch of other scholarships that are out there for our students. So what we wanted to do is um, our big goal right now is to do continue our outreach to local organizations, but also um, do outreach to national organizations. Because for the last, I think from December all the way up to now, we've been reaching out to local organizations that we've usually had help with. But unfortunately, our schedules have not aligned very well. And also, um, it just turns out that a lot of um, um, Native activities are happening around our communities that they just wouldn't be able to help us or they don't have the resources to help us. So what we would like to do is sort of um, make sure during this meeting that we have um, made our message loud and clear that we want that we want our um, our attendees to know that we're accepting um, presenters right now, or if they can recommend someone that can cover any of these topics, because right now um, we're trying to find someone for a personal statement and trying to find someone for a resume and cover letter writing. And luckily we sort of found someone for the volunteer and cultural opportunities for native students. She was actually uh, one of our um, scholarship winners from last year. Um, she's a PhD student from U of A who helped us a lot um, with our AIEA um, summer camp activities uh, before. And then also, um, you know, she's just a big inspiration and she does a lot of um, work with AIEA um, in the past. So what we wanted to do is um, um, she's going to feature sort of her volunteer and cultural opportunities experience um, experiences that she's put inside her um, AIEA scholarship application in the past. So, you know, as a PhD student, she has a lengthy uh, history of working with, um, with tribes, working at the university, and then volunteer opportunities, you know, um, from her um, tribe in New Mexico and here in Arizona. So we're really excited to uh, have her help with the um, with the topics, but usually our web and our educational webinar series covers from all the way to two hours, sometimes beyond that, because we have a question and answer portion that can get a little lengthy. So, um, you know, um, even for the volunteer cultural opportunities for Native students, even if we just have that one presenter, which is good, I think it would be really good if we probably had another presenter along with her so that we can, um, so we can have sort of that, um, 
that uh, really good diversity in how volunteer and cultural opportunities for Native students happen here in Arizona, but also uh, what other scholarship applications are looking for as well, not just the AIEA scholarship application. So um, moving on, we are also having a cultural webinar series. Um, our focus for that series is um, incorporating virtual family arts and crafts activities um, virtually. So right now, our big goal is seeking presenters to teach um, arts and crafts, but also uh, we, what we want as a result is to have um, those that have attended and have done the arts and crafts with us, see if they would like to donate their artwork to the 2021 uh, AIEA Educators Celebration Silent Auction and the raffle. So right now what we are planning is we wanna see if we can do a late March, early April uh, cultural webinar session. And um, most likely it's going to be maybe the first session is probably gonna be a baby ribbon skirt making session or a beading demonstration session. So um, I'm here to do the sort of ribbon skirt making session. The reason why it's a baby skirt making session is because it's easier to follow along if I can work with a smaller piece of fabric, but you know, you know, transitioning that into a larger fabric um, is easy for the, um, you know, for the attendees to vision to visualize. So, you know, baby making ribbon, ribbon skirt sessions will probably take maybe one to two sessions. Uh, what we want to do is probably have it during the after hours of work in school. So maybe after 3 p.m. or after 5 p.m. Uh, we want to make sure that um, have our students and our attendees have enough time to do, you know, their schoolwork or to do dinner and their time with the family um, before the session actually starts. So we, this can be more of a laid back session. Um, from easeability for me, um, the baby ribbon skirt making session will probably just be um, a sort of recorded session beforehand. So I'll be able to talk and then go through the recordings itself. Uh, that would be easier for me to help um, identify if there was any problems I was uh, having with sewing or if there was uh, any questions that came up, we could just pause the recording if an attendee has a question or comment to make. And then second is the beading demonstration. So um, I know Esther's on the call. I know Esther has um, um, really good experience with beading. So, you know, beading is very much on the table because it's an affordable craft, I believe. And also, you know, I could be able to help out with the beading demonstration as well. Um, I recently took up um, earring uh, making uh, as regards to beading. So, you know, I think it's a very, you know, affordable craft and um, there's tons of ways to learn um, beading and sewing techniques to work with beads. So I think it's a very malleable craft that um, a lot of people can do. And then being able to, you know, bead um, small objects like pens or pencils or feathers or small, um, you know, uh, um, baby shoes or earrings or, you know, uh, le um, any sort of leather, you know, that's something that's also on the table that we're exploring. So most likely for the first webinar, um, we're hoping to A, make a uh, flyer to announce it beforehand, probably a week beforehand, and then B, um, have the, um, the session um, recorded or um, do a live session if it helps. And then also continue to uh, make partnerships. So um, we were in contact uh, with Leanne Big Horse um, to talk about um, a partnership with future opportunities for our cultural webinar series. Um, I know that for her program, um, they do a lot of um, um, songs and storytelling events. And I think that's a really good partnership. Um, to do to go forward with if we do do that. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Hi, Jerry. Uh, it's Paul Fulgenetti, uh, Career Success. So uh, the dropout program. 
I have a comment mm -hmm. and it's, we're engaged in this cultural shift where, and this is for leadership. Uh, is there a way to share how important the, the uh, babies, the beads, you know, it's more than bead making, beading. It's much more, it's everything. Caring for other people's children as your own, celebrating and honoring the seasons of life, right? So it's just a comment for leadership to say, if we're gonna meet people halfway, we have a Native American in, in the highest level of government ever. And she needs our support. And one of the ways we can do that is by formalizing and meeting people halfway as to how important these things really are. It's not just bead making, but on, on the street corner and at the fair and at the you know weekly market thing, that's what it is. And that's why it's so great. So there's a balance to be struck, but I would just offer that up for leadership to think as you go forward to, to name these things in a way that a, a, an uninformed observer would say, I get it. It's the foundation of our society and our culture, and it's why we're important. So thank you for listening. Jerry, can I approach? Paul, thank you for bringing up that subject. I think with all of our cultural presentations, we will definitely have the background knowledge and historical knowledge of how it relates to our people and um, giving a foundation in which to build upon I do absolutely think that is needed in our lessons and will be included. It's, you're correct. It's not just um, putting the craft out there to make. We have to have some background knowledge on which to build. So thank you for um, mentioning that. All right, thank you for your input, your comments. Always appreciate that. Paul, as we always say, we always welcome your input. <laughs> thank you for always sharing, feeling, feel, feeling free to share. We, we always enjoy that. Uh, but yes, as Esther mentioned, that is something we, we have talk, spoken about um, among our executives, our executive board about bringing in that cultural significance of the reason why this specific arts and craft is special and significant to whoever we're focusing upon. For instance, the beadwork, you know, we, we talked about how it's really prominent within the plains and northern tribes, not so prominent in the southwest, but it's coming out that way. So what's the significant of the colors? Why are there specific colors that are used? The different designs that are used are, are very special and unique to each tribe that does that type of work. And so those are the type of things that we're going to be including because we are AIEA and we are wanting to share our educational and traditional knowledge with our students to help them get a broader view and a better understanding of who we are and where we come from as a people. And so that is something that we're we would like to be sharing out uh, during these type of workshops. And so we're open to welcoming anyone who would like to partner with us or collaborate with AIEA to make those things happen. Um, as Jerry mentioned, we're very excited to get this series started for our students. We're very much looking forward to collaborating and working not only with um, the Phoenix Health, um, Phoenix or Native Health out of Phoenix um, with uh, Dr. Big Horse, but also with the Phoenix Indian Center. Um, we've been in touch with both of those organizations and they've both expressed that they're willing to help us in that aspect of getting those cultural workshops started. And so again, we are going to emphasize that significant cultural meaning of why it's so important to us. And we would like to share that out to help our students and our community to better understand why things are the way they are. So thank you again for your comments and input on that. Is there any further comments or questions? All right. Um, I do want to make a comment with our educational webinar series. We have reached out to um, Chandra Claw. She's she's out of the Tahana Author Community College, a great resource for us with uh, putting these educational webinars together. Um, and all of our executive board members were reaching out, spanning out. So again, uh, members, if you hear anything back, if they would like to help us with those educational workshops, uh, please let Jerry or I know. 
and we'll get those started. Um, we, we did hear back from um, the TOCC that uh, they're willing to collaborate with some of the workshops that we have uh, listed here. Also, there uh, was a representative from Northern Arizona University who reached out um, last night and today. So we'll get back in touch with her, Jerry, and um, collaborate to see if maybe she can help us with um, some of these educational webinars as well. So um, words getting out about what we're wanting to do. We do have partners and uh, organizations who are willing to help us. And so uh, we'll, we'll make it happen. And as soon as we get those dates confirmed, we will definitely send those out to the membership. So, all right, if there's no other questions. Um, oh, Dr. Bighorst, Lynn thank you so much for um, offering your collaborative efforts with us. We will be in touch with you and uh, to plan those workshops. All right, if there's no questions, let's move on in the agenda to the next item, which are our student scholarships. Um, we're very excited to uh, be able to provide these scholarships for our students. Um, we have three different categories in each category. Um, we have three different scholarships that are available. We have the um, middle school, the high school, and then the college slash graduate level um, scholar categories that we're sharing out with these scholarships. And each of those levels, there's three different types of scholarships that are being provided. The first is our academic scholarship. The second is our exemplary scholarship, which is if you don't quite make the grade, but you're doing well, um, fairly well in your grades and also in everything else, then the exemplary is for you. Um, and then our final category for the scholarship is Make a Difference. The Make a Difference scholarship was created because we know and understand that there are some factors that cannot be um, overlooked or um, cannot be over, uh, we can't get past those for a lot of our students who really can't make the grade, but they excel in other areas such as the fine arts area, um, music or video film, um, drawings, paintings, even arts and craft, beadwork, um, any type of arts that they may excel in or athletics, you know, if they excel in that, then that's making a difference in their community. And if they work or volunteer with their local communities within the tribe or at their school, if they wanted to start a student club at their school, they're making a difference. So that's the type of category and the reason why we created our third scholarship opportunity for our students. So um, we highly encourage you to help us get the word out about our scholarship. Every year, um, we would like to see more applications come in because we know that there are so many outstanding and amazing Native students out there that do wonderful and, and amazing uh, work and excel in a lot of areas. So we encourage you to help us spread the word on getting these scholarship, uh, this scholarship information out. And we're looking to release that hopefully by next month. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Jerry to provide a quick update. Yes, so um, our big goal right now is doing a call for scholarship committee members. Um, right now we have about uh, two or three that are usually very regular. Um, the reason is um, we need help to do reviews of scholarship applications that are going to be in August, but also help reviewing the score chart and then also editing the scholarship application itself. Um, you know, last year because of COVID, um, we sort of did a little sort of, we were relaxed on some requirements, you know, so um, for students during the summer, it was hard for them to have access to their school building, so they were unable to get their transcripts, so we were able to waive that. Um, what we also did was also do an extension um, from late July to then uh, to then mid August, so we were able to give them a few more weeks to do their um, application and um, what we want to do is just make sure that we garner enough committee members so that we can be able to do this. Um, so what we wanna do is uh, for updating the application, um, we, every year we do a new theme and for that theme, um, it sort of guides how the personal statement is going to be structured for our students. And um, one thing that we don't want students to do is recycle personal statements from other scholarships or from last year's AIEA scholarship application. 
um, we also want to implement an art requirement so that um, so that if when they want to do an artwork or feature an artwork that they've already done, we want to see also if they can also make a sort of an artwork that can mirror sort of the new theme. We want to see if uh, we can also get that opportunity to sort of ask them to make a donation to AIEA's educators banquet. So that's sort of the ideas that were sort of uh, floating around for our committee. And then lastly, to finalize and release the application in April, we usually do the release in April. But um, if the committee um, finds that they need more time to um, edit and finalize the scholarship application, most likely it will be, um, it could be a May release. But, you know, a lot of scholarship applications, they usually don't come in until August. Um, to be honest, but also we do get like maybe one or two during June. So, but usually um, during May, it's very quiet. We get a lot of questions regarding the scholarship application. Uh, so last year we did put up this scholarship uh, webpage right here. So if you look to the left, I mean, if you look to the right, it's the scholarship updates from last year. So we're going to be updating this. Um, as we update the scholarship application. So we made that COVID procedure for students to have, um, um, they don't need to require to put inside their, um, their GPA or a, or a transcript or anything like that. Then we have the application itself. Uh, we wanna see if we can do this as a PDF and a Word this year. Um, some students had uh, trouble last year trying to do uh, fill out the PDF form. And then lastly, which is very, very important, they need to look at the scholarship um, FAQs portion. So a lot of the questions that we get in are usually very common, which is why we set up this FAQ portion so that they can be able to have the answers to their questions. So we always make sure to highlight that. And, um, you know, those FAQ remarks are actually um, um, very common information. And also the information doesn't really change. So um, sort of list out the rules of what not to do. For example, we don't accept recycle um, personal statements. Um, we see that um, very easily um, when we review the application. And then also, um, um, other questions that um, different types of students will ask. For example, um, trade school students, um, those students that are pursuing sort of a um, summer um, certificate program or anything like that, you know, this uh, scholarship program for AIEA is just for students pursuing a um, associate's, bachelor's, master's, or, you know, a PhD or a postdoc, um, you know, um, um, degree, so they need to be a degree seeking student and um, sort of, you know, important questions like that are also there on the FAQ section. So we always make sure to highlight that um, in the application and also in our um, emails when they go out to the students who are looking for more information about the AIEA scholarship. And lastly, we do uh, review the scoring chart. Um, Usually that doesn't change all that much. Um, it's a, um, I think it's a one to five um, scoring chart uh, for the points. And then also um, um, reviewing applications in August. Uh, we usually take about maybe one to two weeks to review applications and then making sure that when we select the awardees that they are notified. And then we also notify uh, those that were not awarded. And then also we answer questions um, in the emails, uh, if we do um, get responses from those that were not awarded, sometimes they would like to ask, you know, why they weren't awarded or if there was some other way that they could improve their scholarship application. So that being said, that's why we're having the webinar series for the educational webinar series. Uh, we wanna make sure that we highlight, you know, what's, uh, what's really beneficial for the AIEA student scholarship application. Um, sort of do's and don'ts for those that are in high school going into college so that they can, you know, um, improve their app, uh, their scholarship applications, but also um, making sure that, you know, middle school students have this 
sort of um, equal understanding of what a scholarship application is. You know, we get a lot of questions because they ask, some people ask why we do a middle, a middle school scholarship. You know, we want to make sure that we cover our middle school students, um, you know, that want to apply for a scholarship but don't know how. Um, we give this opportunity because we know not a lot of middle school students get scholarships and uh, we want to provide this experience for them so that they do have experience and they know what is coming up in the next few years when they do go into high school and college so that they're prepared. Um, so that's uh, the big thing that we want to make sure uh, for the webinar series is to for students to be prepared for scholarship application processes. Uh, does anyone have any questions so far about the scholarship or the webinar series? All right. Well, thank you, Jerry, for sharing that update about our scholarship. Um, really quickly, I did put, just want to make mention, I put the scholarship application website in the chat box. I've been dropping some of our AIEA web links in there. Um, I dropped our YouTube channel. Um, the YouTube channel that we currently have for AIEA has all of our past webinar sessions uploaded with the exception of one that we're still working to <laughs> try and remedy the audio and um, technical problems we've been having with that one. Um, that's a very important webinar, but that will be up um, hopefully sometime soon. But all of our other webinar sessions that we've had to date are currently uploaded on our YouTube channel. You're more than welcome and I highly encourage you, you have, if you haven't reviewed those to share those with your students um, about all the past webinars we've had um, last spring. Um, we're looking forward to that, to helping our students to better understand the process of filling out the scholarship application for AIEA. And so thank you, Jerry, for providing the um, scholarship update. And again, if you are interested in serving on the committee, we welcome you to join us. Um, please let us know by contacting Jerry and she'll put you on uh, the emails to for our future meetings. Any more questions or comments? questions about what kind of scholarships we have or if not then we'll move on to the next item on the agenda which is our summer youth camp sorry um, um Kim, but, sorry just wanted to um um so the decision to create this these categories the scholarships occurred i don't know i'm gonna say five or six years ago um, prior to that, we only did three scholarships, one for middle school, one for high school, and one for college. Um, does the body want to relook at these categories and the way in which we administer the scholarship? All right, hearing none, let's move on. <laughs> Thank you, Travis, for sharing that. Yes, these um, scholarship categories are not set in stone. Um, we've kind of uh, been going according to these scholarship categories the past few years. And it, as Travis mentioned, that was the decision that was based upon um, at the time when we created these categories, specific categories to accommodate and try and get more participation from our students. Um, we were hoping to have a larger um, response during those years. Unfortunately, as Jerry has mentioned, and in past meetings, we haven't had such a, you know, too much of a large response from students. Um, I think the most we've had was, and Jerry or Travis, correct me, I think it was maybe at least 102, if that, um, applications that have come in. Uh, and within the past year, since we created these specific categories for our students, and I don't know if if it's maybe they're just not um, taking the time or they forget, um, but it's a fairly simple scholarship uh, application. And this is funding that is used that goes directly to the students. These, this uh, funding does not go to the schools because I know sometimes the schools can apply them to other um, expenses that the students may have, but uh, specifically for college students or graduate students. Um, we have not separated the graduate 
uh, university students from the graduate students. We just start recently actually started including graduate students, I wanna say within the past two to three years on the scholarships. Uh, but if the membership would like to divvy that out separate, then you know we're open to your comments and suggestions. We, you know, we these scholarships and this funding is provided for our students to help them with any expenses they may incur in college. Again, this funding goes directly to the student themselves. Whatever address they put on the application is where we send the check to, and they can use this funding because we know some of them are commuters. They can use it for gas or they're out on their own, they can use it to purchase their foods, or even for uh, our middle school or high school students, you know, needing for school supplies or um, just anything to help them along in their educational journey. So that's what this funding is used for. And again, these scholarship categories are not set in stone. Um, they're open for, um, we welcome you to join us on the committee to share your insight and your input that if you see a better way how we can disperse these funds, we're willing to listen. And so um, again, we encourage you for any volunteers who would like to join us to contact Jerry and let her know. And um, it, as Travis mentioned, it's open to the membership. If we wanna change that around, we are more than welcome to um, hear you out. So thank you, Travis, for bringing that up. So with that um, explanation, we'll ask the question again, you know, open to the membership. Is there anything that you would like to see different on how we disperse the funds? Um, Kim, uh, let me, I'll just say something really quick. So um, last summer, um, I did receive a few quest questions um, sort of uh, during and then after the application deadline did pass. Um, I was the contact person for that. Um, I would say maybe one or two times the students told me, um, um, asked me uh, if they reviewed their application, but then also um, if um, they thought that they were going to receive the application. And um, through that response, they kind of told me, well, I'm just letting you know because of the amount of the scholarship award is, um, they said that they, it probably wouldn't have put a dent inside their uh, finances regarding their tuition. They said that what they wanted to do was apply to these scholarships um, because of their tuition rate. And what they wanted to see was they thought that there would be scholarships out there for Native Americans that were above $1,000. But knowing that it's a, it's a tight squeeze, um, and because of the later date in August, they said that it usually didn't run in the radar until um, the later season of the summer. So they said that they didn't see the scholarship until um, it popped up um, at their school or something like that. So they said that uh, because of the lower amount, they said that they didn't really um, um, think about it until later in the August. So one of the things that, that um, stood out to me was that I didn't want our scholarship to be an afterthought for these students because of the amount that we offer. Um, you know, that was a university student and um, that kind of stood out to me uh, during one of the uh, phone calls that we had. And then, you know, he did unfortunately uh, did not receive the scholarship because our scholarship, all three scholarships for our college uh, categories. Uh, we get a high number for each scholarship category because most of our scholarship applicants are college and then it dwindles down into high school and then lastly we maybe receive one to two scholarship applications for the middle school. So you know outreach is probably a really big issue for us sometimes but also you know probably maybe re-looking at the amounts especially for the college students that really need it. I think that's probably something that we can um, talk about or even have a follow-up discussion later on. Absolutely. And again, you know, this, this is open for discussion. This isn't set in stone that this is the way it has to be and this is how we're going to do it. You know, we're flexible, we're open to hear you out. And just as Jerry and Travis have both mentioned, you know, even the amounts, because that changed once we got the three categories um, listed that we currently have. So the amounts that we provide is not set in stone. That is open for discussion. If we would like to weed out the middle school 
kids and just focus on high school or high um, college students, or if we just want to weed out middle school and high school altogether and just focus on college students. I think we included them because the AIEA um, is geared toward K through P or pre K through 20. So we also include all of the post secondary and, and secondary students. And so it's, it's a wide range that AIEA uh, serves. And so that's the reason why we have these type of scholarships uh, specifically for middle school and high school and college and university. But again, you know, if we want to gear more towards a higher level through the higher education level, you know, we, we're more than happy to, to listen to your input and take that into consideration on how we proceed in the future for these scholarships. So, um, you know, this is always open for discussion. That's why I usually have it on the agenda for us uh, to provide updates and uh, to let you be aware of where we're at with releasing the scholarships and any type of information related to that. And so with that, um, is there any other discussion or comments or questions? Okay, well, we will move on. And uh, again, if you have any questions or comments you would like to share, please feel free to email us. Um, we also have our um, Gmail for our AIA um, members. Uh, we all have access to that. So we'll be able to see that and respond um, in a timely manner. So with that, Jerry, we can move on in the next item on the agenda, which is our summer youth camp. And thank you, Travis, for bringing that, um, providing your input on that. Great discussion. With our summer youth camp, this is our, our Protecting Our Land summer youth camp that we have. We've been holding since 2017. Um, we did, decided to have a summer youth camp because there's so much going on throughout the year with our students and the events and activities um, at the time that was happening that uh, they it was, kind of hard to squeeze it in because again, there's so many things going on in the summer as well. So for a, a lot of um, school events or educational events that are opportunities that are out there for our students, um, so, so much is out there. So we wanted to be unique and different in a way. So we provided a cultural camp. So AIEA started this camp back in 2017 and it was actually on the demand, well, not the demand, but the suggestion from the students who attended our, our last, youth conference that was held at the University of Arizona. They had questions during that time, if you remember in 2016 time is when the uh, no DAPL, the Dakota Access Pipeline began happening and everything that took place with the events and uh, events that took place following that thereafter. A lot of our students had questions because Arizona is not necessarily a treaty um, that a lot of the tribes within Arizona aren't treaty tribes, what we call treaty tribes. So a lot of our students who attended the youth conference had no idea what a treaty was and the, the specific reason of why it was so culturally significant to a lot of those peoples, specifically for the Dakota Access and the uh, Standing Rock Sioux people, why it was so important for that not to happen. And the reason why they always brought up about their treaty rights and why it was important to them for that not to go through their area as a protection of the environment, of the land and the water and um, just their traditional homelands there. So a lot of our students here in Arizona had questions about what that meant. And so from that conversation and from those suggestions and from those questions that were asked, our executive committee came together and decided to create a unique summer camp specifically to address these type of issues. So in 2017, again, is when we started our first summer camp. We focused on um, creating, um, let's see, what did we have our first year? <laughs> we focused on the land, oh, it, our environmental statement is what was created that first year. And the youth, the, the 20 plus youth that attended came up and it was their words that created this statement from the indigenous youth that was actually um, backed and supported by resolutions through several of the Southwest Air environmental agencies. And so it was very promising and very encouraging to see that our youth were standing up and letting their voice be heard through these type of, um, on these type of issues. 
And so from that, uh, the following year, we focused on legal issues on what took place. We used a lot of testimony from what actually happened at Standing Rock and through the No Dapple movement. We actually used testimonies from tribal leaders and uh, people who experienced going to jail and, and being treated the way that they were during that time. And our students really engaged and they created a play, a moving legal play of what their experience was. And they spoke as if it was them that was experiencing that moment. So it was very powerful in what they created and how they each took one part. We had five different groups and they each took part and created this play, this legal play. We had a lot of help from the University of Arizona through the um, IPLP program, the Indigenous um, Peoples, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's through their law program, Indigenous Peoples Law Program that really helped and they provided those testimonies for our students. And so with you know everything that has taken place and, and throughout every year, you know, that it's been a powerful time. And we it's only been the most part we've had about four days uh, for each of our um, past summer camps. But last year due to the, due to the pandemic, we were unable to have our summer camp because everything was being canceled. Um, we tried to see if we could do a virtual camp, but by time just got away from us with everybody who was on the committee and who was collaborating with us. Um, you know, our schedules became conflicted. There was a lot of adjustments we had to do. And so unfortunately we were not able to have a summer camp last year. Instead of the summer camp, we still wanted to hold something unique and special for our students. So we moved it to a winter camp. So the winter camp was created this past year in 2019 of December. And with that, we focused on, uh, we wanted to focus on harvesting and the plants during the summertime. And we had a lot of partners who were willing to assist us, assist with that. And so we, we kept that focus, but it was in a virtual realm. And it was our very first time holding it as a, in a virtual space. So there was a lot of um, technical um, difficulties we had to work out even throughout the uh, summer, the winter camp, but it's a lot of learning and we still want to provide something for our students. And so uh, we, you know, the students that participated learned a lot and gained a lot of traditional and ec ecological information from a traditional and indigenous standpoint. And so we want to continue these type of camps for our students. And so this year we're looking at holding our summer camp again. Um, we're looking at having it as in a virtual realm. And so we want to see, you know, get your input and your suggestions on making that and you helping us make that happen for our students. And so with that, Jerry, I am going to turn it over to you to provide some updates with that. So for our summer youth camp, we're doing a call for camp committee members. Um, last year we did um, for our winter camp, we did have several committee members, which we were very thankful for. They helped organize the virtual youth camp. Um, we um, we did like maybe monthly meetings, which went into bi-monthly meetings as things went on, and then um, usually um, weekly meetings as the summer camp uh, came uh, closer and closer. So what we needed help with was coordinate presenters and volunteers. This being said, we needed um, presenters. Um, we usually um, partnered with U of A uh, for the first few years of the youth camp program. But then as time went on, um, we partnered with NAU uh, um, during the later years. And then lastly, um, luckily we partnered with TOCC last year um, to partner with uh, finding presenters and volunteers, which we were really lucky for. And then also um, we need um, a lot of help to coordinate camp supplies. So once we nail down the um, number of students that uh, we want, that we expect for being attending, we also want to see a presenters uh, and volunteers can donate their time, but also some of their resources. Um, last year during December, we had um, presenters that donated soil and seeds for a for a planting demonstration can, uh, activity, and then um, another presenter donated. Um, her um, actual medicine. So um, she provided students um, lavender and uh, lavender petals. And then also um, 
she also has her own uh, tree, a, um, a juniper tree. So she was able to donate um, some juniper. So, um, you know, we were lucky to have them. And that's sort of the help that we needed in putting together these uh, camp packages for students. And um, we were able to distribute them in the, uh, the Tucson area and the Phoenix area, which we which I will be following up on with uh, more camp supplies because we do still have a lot of camp supplies. Uh, we were expecting about 50 students last, um, during December, but then as time went on, um, there was about 10 or 11 students that actually attended. So um, with this virtual youth camp, uh, we were able to cut a lot of the costs that we usually did for the in-person camp. But um, right now for the committee, what we're hoping to do is just continue to organize it as a virtual camp and then um, send out camp supplies and sort of do the things that we uh, did for uh, the winter camp. So um, following up with the winter camp, uh, we still need to uh, follow up with the payments to the volunteers. Um, Travis, I do have that information for the college mentors that I can send you today. Um, I'm still waiting for um, information from the uh, presenters. And um, also we will be uh, following up with processing the uh, registration payments. Um, so how, um, you know, the uh, school districts are gonna make uh, the payments to AIEA. So um, yeah, so the, for the big call right now for our youth camp committee is just for camp committees, but then also start organizing uh, bi-monthly meetings. So um, we're hoping to see if we can try to plan for a July um, date. That's when we usually do a summer camp, like mid-July. And um, for our winter camp, it was only two days, but because it sort of felt like um, the winter camp was sort of um, condensed into just two days, it was a lot of information for students to um, to take in. So, um, you know, despite having, you know, rest periods and having pauses and breaks for the students, it was still a lot of information for them to process. So what we want to do is probably um, extend it to maybe three or four days so that we all give appropriate amount of times for students to have, um, you know, um, the to pro, uh, process the information. So we're hoping to do um, maybe half days, so that it would probably be a four day camp, but it's just gonna be for a half day. So uh, that's what we're really uh, trying to see if, what could be done. Um, so so those are sort of the, the discussions that we're gonna have in our committee meetings. But um, if you would like to join the committee, uh, please let me know. My information is down below again, and I am gonna be the camp coordinator again this year. So if you have any questions, or if you just want general information about the camp, please let me know. All right, thank you, Jerry. Are there any questions? One of the main things we try and do every year is to come up with a theme. So feel free to offer your input on what our theme could be focused towards. Paul, I wasn't sure if that title, if you were referring to the webinar or if you were referring to our youth camp. Can you elaborate a little bit? I was just following up on the earlier comment <clears throat> about how to bring this. This feels to me uh, equal to its purpose. It says protecting our land, rejuvenating our land. No, no uh, European settler can say that with the same authority. There's an authority behind that. And I would say with the traditional uh, beadwork, there's an authority there and I'm asking as a dominant cultural person for your leadership because it is precisely those cultural pieces that would help our nation through some of the struggles ahead. And so it's your leadership in building us up because we don't have that. We just move into a place and do stuff. See, so that, <clears throat> and I know it's deep. So thank you for hearing me. Absolutely. And that is one of the um, high, highlights we always like to emphasize during these camps for our students that there is a sovereignty among our people and what that means for them and the environment and the land base that we 
um, take care of. It's a reciprocal, you know, reciprocal relationship that we take care of the land that's going to take care of us. And so we always try to emphasize that during these uh, unique cultural camps. So thank you, Paul. Any other comments or questions? And Q, we always welcome you to help us every year. Thank you for your leadership as well and guiding our students. You've been a big part of the um, summer camp for many years. So thank you for continuing to provide your leadership skills with us. All right, if there's no questions or comments, um, Jerry, we can move on to the next item on the agenda, which is our Office of Indian Education update. We always try and provide this on our agenda to keep our membership up to date on what's happening with the, the Office of Indian Education because it's so important for all of us to understand what's going on and to be um, apprised of what's happening and how it can affect our programs and our students. And so at this time, I am going to ask Lynn Ann. She is the current chair for the Indian Education Advisory Council. And I am going to ask her to provide the update. And Sami, you can feel free to join in um, with any further updates. Lynn Ann? Yes, thank you, Kimberly. I just wanna share really quickly, um, uh, actually information pertinent to our students. The um, uh, ADE, sorry, has now set out information for the advisory councils. They are seeking applications for the student um, student part portion of all of that. And so I will go ahead and put in the chat the information there. Um, ADE does have under superintendent, these were created under superintendent, um, well, they weren't created. Some of them did exist prior to, but Superintendent Hoffman has really, um, I think, elevated the the role of um, advisory councils. There are four of them, um, and the Indian Education Advisory Council is one of those. Um, and so, we uh, we do meet quarterly with with Superintendent Hoffman, and they do seek input and feedback. Um, you know, on a lot of the. Um, the direction that she takes, uh, that she is taking the education department in. And so I will put a link um, to just general information about the advisory councils. There is a list of members in the link and maybe I'll just copy and paste that as I'm talking right now. So you all can, you guys will have that. And then um, within those advisory councils, we, uh, within the IEAC, we do have student advisors um, this last year or the current year, I should say, we have four advisors, um, student advisors that are in high school and college. And so we will be seeking our next round of uh, applicants, students to participate in next year's council. And um, so that those applications are now open and I'm going to put the information for those councils here, that'll be coming next. Um, and basically this, again, like I said, these are high school and college students. Um, they will be selected to participate in IEAC meetings and events and to provide feedback and input on the state of Indian education in Arizona. So basically sharing, uh, you know, their experiences, um, th those experiences of their peers and, um, you know, making suggestions about how that can, you know, if improvements are made, are, are needed, making those suggestions as to what those improvements could be. Um, also, another opportunity uh, besides the advisory councils, the adult advice, well, majority adult advisory councils, um, there is the all student advisory council, um, 20 students in grades five through 12. So this is not just high school. This is fifth grade through 12th grade students, 20 of them will be selected um, to meet with Superintendent Hoffman and other education leaders in Arizona um, to get their input also on education matters in Arizona. Uh, so that deadline for the application is also April 2nd, and that is the next uh, message I will send here in the chat. And we can also send out this information as um, updates after the meeting as well. And then the last thing I have is uh, the next IEAC meeting is on Wednesday, April 7th uh, at 4 o'clock p.m. So if you are a current member, we will be meeting April 7th. And that would be the last one. Um, well, I believe we have another one in June, but 
we're coming up to to the end of our our year here so um that's it for me from iac if you guys have any questions i'm happy to answer them otherwise sami you're welcome to share uh, any pertinent information as well thank you if there are no questions for lenin um, i can share a little bit oh i wasn't expecting to but i'm so i'm sitting here trying to think um what areas i can share with you and the biggest one is um that Superintendent Hoffman has announced a $1 million allocation to the Office of Indian Education. And I think historically OIE has been unfunded. So this is pretty big for the department. And um, right now we're at the tail end of um, the strategic planning process that Serena and Terry had undertaken for OIE. Um, in this with the $1 million allocation, I think we're looking to build capacity. So we've been identifying areas to support um, Indian education. Right now, um, some of those things are coming up like the advertisements for positions. And one of the things that I guess I do want to share in that area is that HR has informed us that it, it, we don't get to post our, our postings can't be up for too long. So anywhere from three to five days, um, we negotiated the extension to Sunday. Um, so that position that's currently advertised has been open since Wednesday. Um, I think what we can ask for in your support is to encourage um, current, your current networks or um, graduating students, uh, anybody interested in joining ADE OIE um, to keep their eyes peeled for future announcements as we continue to look um, to the strategic planning piece to develop um, more positions. Hopefully that will come as we, as we finalize those areas. Um, I don't have a lot to share in terms of the strategic plan. Uh, we are having a meeting actually this evening to do a review and um, what, I, what I can focus on is like the four pillars that are going to drive a lot of the decision making and building out of OIE with the, with the new funding. Um, this, what other areas are you interested in hearing when we come to these meetings to, to share out? I think that's one of the things I want to get from the group so we can be, I can be better prepared um, the times that I'm available to be on. Um, but then also to take it back to Serena and see how we can work as a team and provide those updates. Anybody? Those on the call, please feel free to share your questions or input to Sami while we have her. Thank you, Sami, for staying and your patience on this call with our AIEA membership. So members, please feel free to ask questions or um, anything you would like to see further. And I'll just close by um, saying that I did send out um, a large amount of our presentations from the February and March meetings. So I, I know like um, we're all in different areas of expertise and once you take a look at it, our meetings run pretty tight. That's what I've observed so far. We're, we're going from opening to closing, um, talking quite a bit. Uh, we do have opportunities for question and answer. And it's a lot like this where we ask for the questions and it's super quiet. Uh, I haven't really received any um, feedback in terms of um, additional questions beyond our presentations. So I'm assuming that we're doing a really great job People are connecting to what we're sharing. But once you get a chance, um, those of you that put your email in the chat box, I did already send out um, those two meeting uh, updates with our presentation materials. So any feedback is helpful. And if you feel like you want to um, add in or request topics, we're open to that as well. Um, and then also just make sure that you, if you, if you're able to follow the OIE blog, uh, we post quite a bit of information there, and I think that's one way that we can continue to support uh, your your group here. 
we have um, a monthly blog. It's actually moving to bi-weekly. For the most part, it's been weekly. And it, it's just not feasible given the amount of work that our um, policy comms team has. So we're, we're giving um, a two-month two advisory notice to our stakeholders. Um, we're keeping the weekly updates. Uh, and then in May, we'll start moving back to biweekly. So any of your information on um, these opportunities that you've shared throughout, whether it's um, your group here or other areas in your school districts or other organizations, feel free to send that to us so that we can um, review it and determine if it will be um, something we can add to the blog updates. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you guys for giving me some time today. Paul, did you have a question? Oh, go ahead. I have a quick question about who should we send that information to? I'm gonna put um, mine, Serena's and Terry's email in here. Um, if you're already on in their network and you just forward it to us, we're, we're using that information to review and, and then submit for the blog. But I'll put okay. it. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you. Sorry, Paul, you're up. So uh, this has been a long process and I just wanted to say thank you to uh, Serena, you, uh, Terry and uh, Callie for the terrific work to bring these pieces together in a pandemic, in a legislative session Right. I mean, it is it is uh, stunning, astonishing, remarkable uh, leadership that you're providing to give us uh, an outline of how the budget was created, how it will be spent, and to give us an opportunity for input. And we are grateful, and we are going to be equal to that task. We're going to help by providing whatever information you may need to inform your decision making to help the students. Uh, of Native American descent here in our state who are everywhere and who need us now more than ever. So just thank you for your leadership and, and your work. Thank you, Paul. And when you come to our meetings, um, the monthly updates, they are, um, pre our presenters are the specialists or the experts in their field. So although you're seeing all of that information there, Peter does an amazing job of explaining the ins and outs and highlighting key areas um, he just has a finesse about him. So please do, if you can join us in the next few months, um, we'll, we have them scheduled out through December. And next um, month, April 19th, he will be giving an update on ESSER 3. All right, thank you so much, Sami, for providing that input. Thank you, Lenann, for providing our IEAC update. Again, our next meeting will take place on April 7th. Any other questions or comments? If not, then uh, Jerry, we can probably move to the next item on the agenda. Agenda, sorry. And again, if you have any questions, Sami has put their contact information in the chat box. Please feel free to um, share your comments or questions with her, Serena or Terry. All right, now we're at the time on our agenda where we share um, share out what each of our programs are doing. Um, there's a lot going on uh, with Indian education. And so I am going to open it up to whoever would like to share out what is happening with your program or events, upcoming events, or anything you would like to share to the membership here. So feel free to um, share during this time. Hi everyone, this is Ben Richmond with the University of Arizona Southwest Environmental Health Sciences Center. I just wanted to add some more information about our um, youth conference that we're planning with ITCA. Um, so this is a part of our environmental education EPA grant. Uh, right. 
I think they say the date said April 22nd, but it's actually likely going to be the week after that. I will send out um, updated information as soon as we have it. It'll take place virtually um, for probably for half the day. And so we're still finalizing the agenda, but we'll include topics like recycling, composting, um, air quality. Um, and so I will keep everyone updated as we finalize that and uh, send out the save the date again. Hi everyone, this is Q. I hope you're all doing well. Um, <clears throat> I'm the Indigenous Teacher Education Coordinator and Instructor for their Language and Cultural courses. So right now we are currently recruiting for our fall 2021 cohort with our goal of 15 individuals. So I will share out our information um, and uh, if you may send that to your network as well. Prior things that we've done, um, I know some of you have attended these, have been the winter story sharing series um, that started on the day of winter solstice and went throughout the winter. And now we're starting to bring in other knowledge holders just to share stories. Um, it may not be in relation to the winter stories, um, and we're utilizing those spaces, not only for recruitment, but a part of um, land acknowledgement. We've had entities, programs, organizations who've reached out to us and asking how to go about go, um, writing a land acknowledgement. And in that process, um, it's going beyond a, la a land acknowledgement. Um, when they do create their statement, um, there the action starts. And for our on our end as ITEP, we see also our responsibility to inform our allies and our constituents too as well, by also providing these spaces, these knowledges that can be shared um, and allows them to think of different ways of how they can engage their indigenous communities, their tribal communities and nations and how that can inform their institutions, their academic studies. And for us right now, it's really allowing us to also um, <clears throat> find avenues to, to create pathways um, around uh, the language requirement for the University of Arizona. So the University of Arizona has the language requirement, um, although they only offer Spanish, Navajo, and Tanatham, but not the other Arizona, 22 tribes, um, their languages, or even you know outside of Arizona. So we're looking to see how we can advocate for that component because it can really be a barrier for some of our students who have not met the two, four semester language requirement. Um, so if you all wanna be on the ITEP listserv, please submit your email to the group chat or you can send it to me via email. I had just shared that, I'll share it again um, and I'll add you to the listserv. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, this is Leanne Bighorse uh, with Native Health. Um, I just wanted to share a few things that we have going on currently. Um, we host a weekly Native Youth Talking Circle and that's on Tuesdays um, at 4 p.m. And this is open to Native youth up to age 17. Um, so um, everyone's welcome to um, you know, send youth our way. Um, it's a place where they can feel safe and process information. Um, we start with a opening prayer and a closing prayer, and then we, um, you know, we have a, a topic of discussion always too. Um, we have a Native Youth Book Club. Um, we are actually closing this session, and our next session will start in May. And um, in these book clubs, we're reading uh, books by Native American authors, and um, this is fostering a conversation on topics like historical trauma and genocide, but it's also giving us a space to talk about current in, current issues in Indian country uh, with young people. So we feel like it, it, it's a good way to spark that interest for them to learn more about who they are in their community. Uh, we also have a resilient indigenous youth council that meets twice a month. And uh, with our youth council, we're hosting the cultural um, exchange nights for the community. And um, this month we have uh, Apache singing a workshop with Joseph Kise um, 
from the White Mountain Apache Reservation. So, you know, we're open to collaborate on a lot of different opportunities for young people. Um, we're trying to uh, really promote culture and identity and give our young people a space where um, they can feel connected to other Native youth within the community. So thank you very much. Um, all our registration information is available at our Native Health Phoenix uh, website. Um, and then we're also on social media as well, Native Health Phoenix. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody else who would like to share out? I just have a really quick uh, couple, uh, two things quickly. Um, I'm with Phoenix Union High School District, and we currently have uh, five Native American advisors that work in our district. Um, one of them is retiring. Uh, she's been with our program for over 20 years, more like 22, 23 years, and she's retiring this year. So we will be opening up a position for a um, Native American advisor in our district. So the posting is not up yet, but I'm looking, I believe that'll be up in the next uh, couple of months. So if anybody's interested or you know anyone who is qualified for that position, uh, you know, have them check out Phoenix Union, um, pxu.org. And then the second thing, our program is gonna be hosting um, in the month of April, some uh, drive-in movie events. And we're looking for some exhibitors. I'm looking for college and career um, exhibitors as well as um, community or organizations, partners, you know, anybody that's interested. And so, uh, if you can send me an email, I'll put my email address in the chat. Um, just email me if you're interested in tabling at our event. Uh, obviously, it'll all be, um, you know, con with consideration of COVID safety and things like that. So um, we'd be happy to have you. That's it. Thank you. May I share one um, more item? I forgot um, that we are planning an ITEP conference. May I share, be provided share screen? I would like to share the, uh, the flyer with you all. Or may we have multiple screen shares? Um, so this is the ITEP conference um, that we have been planning. We planned it for spring 2020, um, although due to um, the pandemic, we've had to postpone this. Um, this will be virtual. So we have our keynotes of Sandy Grande, uh, Tiffany Lee, and Django Paris. And our theme this year is mobilizing decolonial praxis. This is our first conference for ITEP, um, and I will share this out too. We are just now opening registration, so thank you. Thank you, Q. Um, if you want to forward the flyer to, to me, we can get that out to our membership as well. I wasn't able to see it. It may just be my internet too. All right, was there any other program share outs or Anything that you would like to share with our membership here, please feel free. We have a couple of minutes. Hey, this is Esther. Monique, you can go ahead. I was just going to share a few inf um, flyers and information. So, um, so currently I'm working on the BIA Climate Resilience. Um, it's a climate change grant, and we are hosting several workshops with uh, the tri-universities. And um, I know uh, right now we, we just released the pest management workshop. So it's emergency preparedness for outbreaks. Um, I'll put that in the chat uh, on our flyer as we just released the registration. It'll be a workshop. Um, all the workshops this year will be virtual. And it's in coincide with um, a conference we were supposed to be putting on last year. However, we are continuing the workshops on the elements of wildfires, um, pests, and water and heat related. So I will um, share the information in the chat. That's it, thank you. Thank you very much, 
everyone for sharing all your information. It's good to hear what's happening around, uh, like I said, tight here, Indian country and Indian education. Um, please continue to move forward and provide strength in your community. Um, I know here at Mesa Public Schools, it's been a challenge, but it is totally worth it. Um, with the first land acknowledgement being presented um, a couple of months ago or last month, time goes, time is going by really fast. Um, it has trickled. Um, so more districts or more high schools and principals are reaching out looking for support. And that support is going directly to our teachers. So since that has happened, the update one is we are working with our social studies department in actually providing resources that will go directly into the classroom, supporting the Arizona standards. So um, we're working on some major kits right now that are gonna go to each school. And then secondly, we're working with our um, world language department in developing our website and continuing to develop Navajo Nation, Navajo language, Dene Bazad, and um, those tribal consultations. If you are working in that format, have questions ready for them. Our, my role, in my role, and for some of you as well, during those tribal consultations, you know, they ask for so many pieces from us, so much um, data and questions and PowerPoint and all of this information, but you also have to have something, a request from the tribe as well. And so this round during my tribal consultations, I'm like, what can the tribe do for the students that are here within my district and have something for them? You know, ask them, this is what I need. This is how I need your tribal support. And so moving forward with that, I now have several uh, webinars set up for our students um, like to give information. Um, so yeah, definitely have um, questions and areas that you need support in from the tribes when you're uh, contacting your tribes. Um, so those are some of the great things that I think that are awesome and uh, we're working, just continuing to work and provide cultural education to our educators, giving them the background knowledge, not just crafts as we were talking about earlier, but providing that cultural knowledge, real thick homegrown knowledge, you know, those grassroots, they need that exposure. They need that information to understand where our students are coming from. So continue your good works, everybody. I appreciate all of you and, and thank you for spending your time to be here today. And then I'll pass that over. If you have any questions, um, I'm always here and open, my door's open. And yes, um, there are reasons for beating. So this is the peyote stitch right here. And I've had this for several years and there are representations and meanings for these colors and how they are powerful when we give these over to our students. So keep moving forward, everybody. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Esther. Always great encouraging words to all of us. So great work that you all do. Um, I am going to actually call out Kate Tice. Um, I forgot to share out the in our legislative updates earlier about one of the bills that is going through legislation right now. So Kate, if you want to just take a few minutes, um, I know we're just a little bit past time, but just very quickly, maybe highlight some of these bills that you shared with us, just so to give our membership a better understanding of what's happening. Sure, um, these move quickly. So graphics don't really last very long in this world. You know, um, every time a weekly schedule comes out, something changes. So um, SB 1452, which is a voucher expansion bill, um, which is another very large voucher expansion, um, similar in nature to the one that we had fought in 2018, passed um, Ways and Means Committee on Wednesday. Um, if you have a chance to go back and watch that video through the AZ Ledge, um, 
it was it's a it's an interesting watch um limited testimony has been limited um for people who are speaking against the bill um by the representative who's in charge of the committee um, you can see an, a whole other list of bills that are there. Some of them would um, require teachers to uh, have their enti the entirety of their curriculum and assignments, all the materials that they're using for students in advance, a year in advance um, for those to be seen. So um, I know that as a classroom, as a previous classroom teacher myself, that would have a huge impact on what I'm doing. Um, and back to 1452 for a moment, there were a couple of amendments made to that bill um, in, in an effort to try and make it more palatable. Um, we're not sure where the votes stand on that in the entirety of the House, but you can see that there's some maneuvering trying to go on um, go on with the bill. So I, I don't want to speak on, on the details of it now because I feel like it will change or maybe already changing and there might be new information. So um, if you're not signed up for the legislative updates through Save Our Schools Arizona, I would encourage you to do that. Um, we are keeping track of all of these bills and so you can see a status. And if you're wanting to get involved, um, we always have a list of uh, calls to action that people are able to take, you know, if they're moved to, uh, you know, start following these a little bit more closely. Thank you, Kate. Sure. I do want to share out with um, Becca Alvarado came in a little bit late uh, just due to her schedule and short staff at NAU. But um, she did share a flyer with me. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get it. And it may be because she had to hop off and I wasn't able to download it quick enough or <laughs> I'm not sure why it's not coming up. But um, she just wanted to share about the Tri-Universities. Um, oops, let me try and get, I'm trying to post it in the chat. Um, the Tri-Universities week, um, weeks that are happening for first year and transfer students. Um, I will try and get um, the flyers so that we can share it out to everybody. Um, but this is happening with both um, ASU, NAU, and uh, U and uh, what do they call you? I always call them U of A. Um, U, U, Inver uh, U University, U Arizona. <laughs> Excuse me. But this is um, several events. Thank you, Jerry, for pulling that up. Several events that are happening that they have scheduled uh, for both high school students and transfer students. Uh, transfer students. So um, the web, web link is in there. So please feel free to um, click on that for further information. Again, I will try and get that flyer uh, from Becca before um, the weekend. And that way we can send it out to the membership in a follow up email. And again, there's um, lots that's being shared in the chat room. Um, Jerry, please be sure to catch everything that's being shared there. Um, thank you, Kate, for sharing your weekly updates. Um, if you haven't signed up for the uh, Save Our Schools Arizona weekly updates, I encourage you to. They share a lot of information about legislative updates specifically for education. So she shared the um, update link there in the chat as well. So with that, um, I want to say thank you all for your patience. Um, we did go a little bit over time with this meeting. Our next meeting will take place on April 16th. Um, we do have a calendar up on our uh, website under our AIA under ITCA, uh, which I shared the link earlier in the chat that does have a, our calendar. We meet every third Friday until things change. Uh, but so our next meeting will be April 16th at 11 o'clock. So with that, if there is no other comments, questions, suggestions, um, we can adjourn the meeting. So I will call for a vote. Thank you, Esther, for sharing the ASU recharge. That was the other thing I missed. Um, that is happening soon on April 10th. It's going to be a virtual uh, event. So Esther shared the ASU registration there in the chat as well. So with that. I make a motion to end the meeting for today at 1.10 p.m. Okay. Motion has been put on the floor. Is there a second? A second. Okay. 
Lynn Ann second that. All in favor say aye. 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 This one. Hey. <laughs> well, go. Thank you all again for joining us today. Uh, as always, we it's great to see everybody. And so have a great weekend and uh, we will be in touch. Thank you, everybody. Good seeing you all. Have a good weekend.